Hello friends, uh, it's Sarah here from the Centre for Mental Health. I have to say I'm really pleased to see that January is behind us. It's an extraordinary time and um, every time I start one of these videos I try and think of something to say that is positive and comforting. Well, um, I just think that uh, it's best to just say that we continue to be in solidarity with all of you. We understand the pain and the trauma that many of you are going through right now for all sorts of reasons. The pandemic is deepening and therefore the consequences are deepening too. We at the centre uh, continue to uh, battle behind the scenes, think about um, exactly how we're going to achieve equality in mental health. Who do we need to speak to? Who do we need to bring on board? Those are the things that we think about every day. But uh, it's also Children's Mental Health Week and, you know, there's lots going on. There'll be loads of content this week, really great information. I'm sure people will share their stories, etc. But I think we must remember that in order to have resilient children, we must have a resilient society. And by that, I mean that children have a fair chance in life. They have safe homes, they have resources, they have opportunities, they have education, they have love and support. Those are the things that make children resilient. Those are the things that we must make sure are the priorities for rebuilding the country, the world, to ensure that the next generation aren't lost in the way that people are describing them right now. We have a chance to turn this ship around and we really must take that opportunity. We must be brave and walk into some really difficult conversations, make some brave policy decisions, really tackle poverty and inequality. Those are the only solutions. The pandemic has revealed things about us that we can't now unsee. So um, at the Centre for Mental Health, we continue to talk about our Mental Health for All, the report that we published last year. We're working with others to, to make sure that our Equally Well campaign supports the rollout of the vaccine to people with serious mental illness. We are trying to think about how we best support criminal justice and making sure that people in prisons and in probation and in various services also get the opportunity to access the help they need when they need it. It's a busy time. It's going to be busy for a long time. And so I really urge you to uh, yeah, check in with what we're doing, follow, share our stuff, make sure that uh, you're talking to your MP about what you think we need to do to take us to the next stage of recovery. I'm homeschooling my children with my husband. I'm very lucky to be able to share that. Um, I'm not gonna use the word burden because uh, it's also a privilege in many ways but it's not easy. So I also want to send a message out there to all the parents who are struggling to homeschool, who are frantically, you know, Googling the answer to questions that we've forgotten. We can only do the best we can. It's really important that we put our children's well-being and their mental health first. I know that their educational attainment will come if they are supported and that they have a chance to just survive the pandemic. So um, look out, we're, we're going to reignite our podcasts and I'm really excited to do that. We're uh, publishing our A Year in Our Lives stories and please do catch up on those. I tend to save them up when I need motivation and drive. The stories are extraordinary. We also uh, published a, a poem by one of our colleagues, Ibrahim, last week. It's exquisite. The film is moving, mesmerising. Please do catch up with that too. So uh, from me to you, I hope that you're OK. You're as OK as you can be. And we'll check in with you soon. And uh, yeah, take care. Much love, Sarah.